But the fact that, that most people don't work on that part of it and continue to buy books and continue mm. to go to seminars and continue to get a new diet without figuring out the other parts is why they're failing. Be it now and then it will come to you. You can't wait till you get it to become that thing. want to welcome you guys to episode nine last time i got it wrong i said it was like episode six when it was really episode eight we are at episode nine of the That's dna crazy. of greatness podcast i'm your host aquarius wave and this is mr five steps to greatness himself coach bobby blueford what's up what's guys it? coach bobby here mm, getting ready to uh inspire motivate not only you and my partner aquarius uh but in many ways i'm here to coach me um, to greatness. So let's get to let's it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk. Speaking of coaching me. So today's subject matter is it's obviously one of the main pillars of the five steps to greatness, you know, created by coach Bobby Blueford, a system to greatness for every walk of life. But the reason why this one stood out is because I have personally been in this space where I've taken a transition from a state of like desiring to believe then starting to believe, then believing, and now I'm in a state of like that belief is ingrained and it's become a, a part of me at a cellular level, right? And something I've realized on this journey of belief is that, you know, as you always say, Unc, is everything has a process, right? There's a system to everything. You can systemize anything yep. in this life. And so yep. that was something I felt was crucial, especially for... Now, not only our audience, but within ourselves to continuously internalize that our belief is not up to happenstance. It's not up to chance ever. It's in our own hands. Do we yes. want to believe or not? Right. Yes. And so I kind of wanted to start with this and I'm going to get into the opening question for you. But what continued to repeat as this theme popped up in the last two days before I even sent it over to you was two scriptures or one scripture specifically, and it was faith comes by hearing, right? And hearing by the word. And again, that could be kind of dissected in a multiple different ways. But my interpretation of that is your faith develops by your listening, whether it's internally, externally, mm -hmm. whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So again, belief, faith is not something we have or don't have. It's do we believe in what we desire? Do we believe in the things that are going to, you know, create the lives that we want? Or do we believe in the things that are in opposition to what we desire in our lives? Right. right? We're always in a state of belief. We're always in a state of having faith. And so when it says, um, you know, faith comes by hearing, it's speaking of that belief in God that all things are possible through you. Right. The belief that you are the child of God, therefore you can do all things. That's the belief and faith we look to cultivate. And within my own journey, I realized that when my faith was shaky was because I was listening to a multitude of different voices, yep. right? And I wanted to uh, bring this up because this is something we got into during our last just standalone meeting. And you were explaining to me how you had kind of this um, situation with your team. I don't know if you want to get into it, but I felt like it was such a powerful story as far as like at every moment in our lives, we have the decision of, are we going to listen to our belief in our greatness? Or are we going to listen to the belief in, you know, the opposite, which is the lie? Right. So, and, and I mean, and that that is such a profound question that I believe most people don't ask, let mm -hmm. alone answer. And I'm doing I'm doing my sit my seventh. Uh, BTY Symposium this Sunday. Mm -hmm. For those who watch this episode, it'll, it'll probably be passed, but there will be more symposiums. And That's my symposium cool. idea was born from, in in many ways, this exact predicament wow. and question, right? Because, as you said, there are five steps to greatness. Mm -hmm. And by greatness, you know, that, that can be defined many ways. I define it as something that that your soul and spirit has been drawn to, something that the voice inside of you is calling you to, but that you know on a on a on a earthly level requires challenge and work and maybe maybe time. And so it's beyond the immediate gratification. And so to get that will require sacrifice. 
but your heart spirit tells you you want it. So that's it could be losing weight, it could be a, a business, it could be you know a pod, podcast, it could be you know counseling people, whatever it is. But whatever that that greatness is for you, it requires five steps. And most of us begin with with the tools, the book, the coach, the teacher, mm-hmm. the, the trainer. Yeah. And and what we talk about and what we're going through as as brothers in, in, in the Lord and, and as as brothers in spirit trying to make our lives uh impactful is we understand the first two elements of that journey are are a sincere driven desire, I call it want, mm-hmm. and then a faith in the possibility of that. We call yeah. it connection to source. We call it understanding who you are, understanding whose you are. Um, and so my symposiums talk about the very thing you alluded to. Mm. It is so hard for young people today to sit with the source of their strength hmm. and their greatness. Wow. Because they never set aside time to do that. We had to do it. When I was in, you know, when I was growing up and chasing my first dream of football in the 80s and and, and 90s, we didn't have social media. We didn't have mm. the internet was just starting. So I had to have have time with my inner self. Wow. I had to have time with my source. Now I read books. I I might have saw, you know, a, a show on television or a game that inspired me, but for many many hours I was able to sit down and think about who I was and, and reflect and connect with, with the person or thing or source that was putting inside of me this, this drive to be great. Mm. And so I was able to sit down and have conversations with source that directed me in the right direction. Hmm. Right? So now what happens is we forget that or don't know it as young athletes yeah. Because we don't have time to do that. So all we're, all we're led to, all we're driven to, all we're pulled to are other people's idea of what it takes to be great. Mm. And because oftentimes, many, many, many times, the messaging is coming from someone who's living their dream. Mm. Right? That person's being called to be a trainer. That person's being called to be a salesman. That person's being called to be a company. So they're so they're sending you messaging whether it's a you know a, a direct call or talk or conversation or email or social media ad. They are contacting you in this earth, right? Fulfilling their dream. And that's the mechanism to do it. And so you are just receiving the manifestation of what they're doing for their dream. Hmm. And because of that all you're getting is step 3 as a student athlete, step three of the of the of the matrix, if you will, of the steps, and you are never or or, or hardly ever watering and 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 fulfilling and paying attention to the first two steps is understanding where your desire comes from, and then understanding how you're going to make it hmm. based on your belief system, and and we don't do it enough. And so I try to focus on that as you do, um, and teach it not only to other people but also try to try to live it in my own life. Hmm. I love that. So I really wanted to take today as an opportunity to kind of, um, I guess, debunk some things, but really bring some deep clarity and demystify a lot of these aspects of belief and faith, right? So I remember when I was making this transition from, you know, this ultra religious fundamentalist uh, Pentecostal race kid into somebody who had broader perspective on God. Right. I was taking God out of that God box that I had placed it. I can't even say him or her. Mm-hmm. Right. This entity that is the creator of all reality. When I was in that space, there was a time I started questioning belief and faith mm-hmm. because all my life I was told that. Belief was a a thing you did because you had no evidence, right? Or belief was something that you engaged in as a means to continue to keep on in something that you did not understand and never right. could understand. Right. And so I had accepted that version of belief for a majority of my life until, right? Mm-hmm. And there came this moment when I really started to dissect belief. 
Because, you know, when I was a kid, I was always questioning everything, right? Everything was a why, and I get shut up a lot in the church. Yep. But as an adult, nobody could tell me shut up. So I ventured down that path, and I started asking myself questions like, okay, so what actually is belief? Like, what is faith? And I also had to come to the reality that a lot of what I called belief or that I thought I believed in, I truly didn't. Right. right? Because of course, even, yeah, of course, yeah, exactly. Even, even in my religious upbringing, one of the scriptures that we were raised on is faith is the substance of or the evidence of things not yet seen. Yes, of course, but faith shows itself through its fruit and shows itself through its work. So that means if I truly had faith, if I truly had belief, then it had to produce something. Right. Like all faith produces. Right. right. That's its manifestation. So if there's no productivity from it, that means you're actually not a believer you don't have faith and i quickly came to realize that it wasn't just me in that space but almost everybody i knew who wore this title of a christian did not believe right they did not have faith because they were moving through life in a way that was not producing the fruit unk. Exactly. exactly they were saying they believed in this god who is all powerful can do all things but yet every day they're fearing a devil every day right. they're living their life as if god doesn't exist Right. right. Fearing well, when the money's going to come through, if their kids are going to be taken care of or, if the, you know, if the divorce is going to, you know, eventually happen or not. Happen. Like they're continuously in the state. Again, I'm going to bring up a lot of scripture in today's message. You know, they're, they're in the state of, you know, um, be anxious for nothing. Like these are the words and the message we get. Right. But yet they're anxious for everything. Yeah. But all things give thanks. And then nothing. Yeah. Give thanks. Like I started to I really started to have to dissect this for myself because. I knew the words, I knew the scriptures, I knew the terminology, the Christianology, the, the Christianese as we like to call it, but it wasn't resonating until I said, bro, like if faith is a real thing, if belief is a real thing and it produces tangible results, then there must be some sort of process of it, right? Right. And if it's, if it's not something that we can buy it's not something that we can get from somebody else, then it has to be something that's cultivated within. Mm -hmm. Exactly, right. right. And and there came a point when, you know, I was basically from, from kind of my entrepreneurial rooting, I realized that most soft skills are skills nonetheless, right? So you can say, well, I'm not that great uh, of a communicator. You can learn to communicate. Of course, exactly. Right. Right. Well, I'm I'm not that good at you know um you know persuade. You can learn to be persuasive, right? You can learn psychology. Like all of these soft skills, we think are inherent. Well, actually, are a part of who we are, but they have to be cultivated. They have to be brought mm -hmm. out. And so I started looking at faith in the same way. I said, can faith be something that is cultivated? And that then took me down this journey where I now got into mind science, right? And the understanding of the subconscious mind and the understanding of how this thing functions. What is thought, right? How does the brain process? Right. And that brought me to a place where, you know, two years later, a year and a half later, I now have a complete understanding of what faith is or what belief is and how it is cultivated. Right. And so this is the place that I want to start and... You know, we're going to go all over the place. We're going to journey within this subject matter because it's so important. But I wanted to come right out with this is for anybody who's listening or watching right now, whatever moment in time this is. There is no person who was born with less or more faith than the other. Right. There's no like greater measure of faith. The person who you see who does things that seem remarkable is because they have cultivated that Absolutely. faith. Within yep. themselves. That's all that is. Right. And yesterday, I was compelled to just watch an episode of The Men That Built America. I hadn't watched that specific version in a while. Mm -hmm. And there were episodes I didn't know were in like the first, um, what do you call it, the first season. And it was specifically on like the first tycoons, right? The very, very early guys. But they were in between the Rockefellers and, you know, before the people we now have is like this entrepreneur space, the 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s. And it was like the DuPonts, the Henry Kaisers. Like these are names we know, but we don't know who they were. Yeah, exactly. How impactful they actually are in society overall, right? So I could go about this all day long, but the person who impressed me more than everybody else was an individual by the name of Henry Kaiser. Now, Henry Kaiser was an unknown individual, and to most of us is still unknown, but yet his impact is everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. He's been to the Kaiser Hospital. That was literally just a hospital he built for his employees, that's like that's how wow. grand this guy became. 
Wow. But he started as like your like day laborer or a guy who was trying to start, you know, some sort of business, but had no real defined skill set. And, you know, in essence, what happened was um, there was a Great Depression that hit a lot of these tycoons were seeing that the president at the time was doing nothing. So they said, we got to pull this guy, Henry Hoover, out of office and we need somebody who understands us from a business aspect. Right. And so they brought in FDR. Right. Some say is one of the greatest presidents of all time, Roosevelt. So they pay basically Roosevelt's way into office. And instead of standing up for, you know, the high social class, he starts to make them the enemy. And he says the bankers are the problem because they're making monopolies in the banks that these guys are doing this. And so he starts to make all these moves. And basically the opportunities that the, the tycoons at the time had, he was kind of stripping away from them and trying to mm -hmm. give back to quote unquote the people. Mm -hmm. So he was taking contracts from one side and basically because he didn't trust a lot of these kind of industrialists, he was looking for new individuals who he could trust and basically back, right? As they were trying to rebuild America and its economy in, in the greatest depression of all time in world history. So up comes this character named Henry Kaiser. This dude is commissioned to create what is now known as the Hoover Dam, right? One of the oh, wow. big dams in the world. And if anybody's seen the process of building a dam, Crazy. especially that size, yeah, it's, it's actually unbelievable. This man takes the contract to build this dam and he's never built a damn thing in his life. You know what I mean? He had never, I mean, he had probably barely seen a dam, but he said, I'll do it. And I, what I connotated that with is audacity, right? Yes. Which is a byproduct, it's a fruit of belief. Yes. Right? Yes. Now, now, there was, you know, a multitude of different things he had to face along the way, but there was always innovations that came up, even though he didn't understand the space, because everything was rooted in his belief. Right. Fast forward to World War II hits were attacked at Pearl Harbor, et cetera, et cetera, right? All the tycoons have to now come together. The government now has to join in with the tycoons to make things happen. But yet again, they commission Henry Kaiser for building our ships. So Henry Ford with building the bombers, um, DuPont with building the ammunitions, and then we have um, Chrysler with building the tanks, and then we have this individual, Henry Kaiser, with building these massive, like, arc size ships this man has never built a boat <laughs> wow. but he says in a year i'll have 500 built they said wow. it would have taken 100 years to get that many of those built but he took the contract and said i'll do it and i'll and i'll figure it out right so wow. the reason i bring this person up and i speak to nauseam is because it really displays some to me unk and it said bruh it's it's got nothing to do with talent it's got nothing to do with work ethic. It's got nothing to do with any damn thing besides audacity. Yep. You feel me? The audacity of greatness, yeah. And, and I, we've used that word, you and I, right, in, in, our, in our previous talks and videos. Um, but it's so funny because we, we do, you know, we as a people, we as motivational speakers, we as... Um, religious followers, we use belief, and it's such a vague word. <laughs> yeah, right. And and I love part of my gift is my ability to take these concepts and kind of bring them back to like you know layman's mm. concepts, layman's terms through analogy and story and anecdotes and so forth. And it's crazy because you said it already. We we none of us like belief. Right when you have when you have anxiety and fear and doubt and stress mm. the way I do, if I'm being honest, um, you believe in negative outcomes. Correct. It's that simple. Like yeah, I don't believe. Yeah, you do. You believe that that the worst will happen. Yeah. You believe you'll get sick. You believe you can't lose weight. You believe you'll lose your job. You believe you'll never get hired. Whatever it is, right? When you have excitement and enthusiasm and you have the audacity to ask for a contract mm. and you wake up every day working out and, and eating right, you have a belief in an outcome that your that your spirit connects with. Absolutely. Right? That that your that your source is is uh what do you call it? Is okay with, is comfortable with. That's why you feel good. So when we say belief, we often we often do it as a crutch, 
Mm-hmm. Because we want to be off the hook and not be responsible. When in fact, not only that, what I just said, but our emotions will dictate to us what we really believe. Hmm. So in, 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 to your point, what we really need is a knowing. Yes. Right? We say belief, and we probably do believe because believe is something that's below knowing. Mm-hmm. Right? Those people who say they believe, they're, they're beyond what the general term is because you said, like, like you said, the Bible alludes to you know, uh, belief is in things you can't see, right? But, mm-hmm. okay. But the ones who really believe yeah. in things they can't see, they know it. Exactly. They don't believe it. Like, like, like you really believe you're going you're gonna to continue to have, you're going to have 5% body fat, Coach Bobby, at 51? No, no you I know. mean, I know it. I know how it works. Why would Correct. I, why would I not believe it? Yep. Like, you believe the sun's going to come up tomorrow? I mean, why would, you would never say, I believe the sun's coming up tomorrow. Or I believe mm-hmm. if I drop this uh, rock, it'll fall. Do you mm-hmm. believe it? I don't, it sounds silly because I know it will, but I can't see it. I don't know how gravity works. Yeah. Right? But I do know that if I drop this rock, it will fall to the ground. Mm-hmm. So we say belief, but what we want to be is at a level of just knowing. Exactly. And that only comes, like you just said before, of a self-discovery and a self-remembering. Mm-hmm. Right, remembering of what your source is, and 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 like you said, when you first come come into this world as a physical being, from a non-physical energy, mm. right, you already have that connection to source. So Absolutely. now, knowing which people call believing, is just remembering yes. these connections we have with source, and that's the part that because we keep hiding behind. This ambiguous, these ambiguous things, like want, even if, even even the want level, we'll get into that. Yeah. But we hide behind the words want and believe, yeah. which are my two words, right? Again, my two words, guys who are watching this. My first two steps are the exact two steps in think and grow rich, mm. right? Desire and faith. But even those two words, desire and faith, we make it ambiguous. Mm. And and if we're if we're sticking to believe. And faith, um, we have to understand what that looks like, mm. and what it looks like is what is what Kaiser did. Correct is is acting upon something because you know you can do it. Yeah, and you don't know it based on what you see. Mm-hmm. You don't know it based on what others have done. You just know it. Yeah, right. And so we want we want to be. We don't want to have faith or belief. We want that. In terms of what we think it, it is, but what we really want is to know mm-hmm. that we come from source. Is to know that God makes all things possible, mm-hmm. and to a- have actions that demonstrate that. Right, and we don't do that, so we got to kind of, kind of get back to that, which is what you're doing, which is what I'm beginning to do, is get back to why. Why don't I have belief? Exactly, which we, which we now know is really knowing. Why don't I have faith? Mm. Right, because saying it is one thing, but your actions suggest otherwise. Right, That's you so- being the watcher and me being Coach Bobby, our actions suggest otherwise. That's so good. That's so so good. And I'm I'm glad you brought it up in this holistic way. Right, again, you're a brilliant teacher, and that's why this always works. Is nobody missed that message? You just choose to ignore it. <laughs> like that's yeah. it. Like you just yep. laid it all out there. So I just wanted to use again a story in its analogy or its allegory more than just like its physical representation. So you hear about the story of this guy, uh, David, who was a shepherd boy out in the fields. And there's this transition from him being in the fields to him slaying this giant that nobody else in their army could to him then becoming this king, right? Yep. So when we look at these different Davids, we think to ourselves, Well, it's easy for him because he was just meant to be king, right? And it's easy for him to believe because, look, he slayed a giant. But we forget that when he was in the field looking after the sheep, right, there was an attack on the sheep. It was a lion attack and there was a bear attack, right, as the story says. Now, if I was in the field trying to protect something or I was commissioned to protect something, And there was a wild beast that came, right? I'll be terrified at first. 
But if I knew that the most important job for me, the most important responsibility and role was to protect these animals, and that was my only agenda, then I'm going to do whatever is necessary to do right. so. Right? Right. And so there is going to be something mustered in me that gets me to fight the lion or fight a bear. Right? Mm -hmm. Especially if you got some kind of, he had provocation like family. This is his family's wealth that he's basically looking right. after. Right? Right. And so he attacks this lion, the first attack, and then eventually the bear. Now, what happens in him defeating the lion and defeating the bear is his faith grows. So he sees that I am able to do this thing and then do yes. that thing. Yep. So by the time he gets to the giant, he already knows he can take out a wild beast. What is a giant in comparison to that, right? right. And the reason I bring this story up is because we all have evidence of God working and manifesting through our lives continuously. Yep. Things that most people would look at it as a miracle are things that we look at as, oh, what? That, that was nothing, right? Yep. At this point in our life, uh, there's an of course that was once impossible to us. Right. And so, uh, as you were saying, with like we look to transition to knowing, the knowing aspect comes from, again, those baby steps. And the, I believe that's the universal process to get you to remember again or get you to recognize or realize, right? right? Is you get evidence at all moments in time. There are yeah, things absolutely. you cannot explain absolutely. away. Absolutely. And, and you, the thing about it is, I had a call yesterday, right? Hmm. And, um, you know, so, I, so I'm putting my soul in, I'm putting my seeds in the soil, right? And making mm -hmm. sure my soul is right, making sure... But even when I do that, right, I'm not watering it, you know, with confidence going to grow. I'm just like watering it, like I hope it grows. So, so my belief system is, is needs work, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm on the phone with this, with this woman, um, young lady. I met her. She's the sister of the guy I met in Napa, who, mm -hmm. who I'm going to partner with to do these wine tasting, wine painting, motivational mm -hmm. events, right? His sister is a speaker. Oh, wow. Phenomenal. Wow. I mean, she's Tiana Burst. She's huh. a she's a badass, right? And so, um, and so I just, you know, obviously I know her brother, and we were connected via Instagram. So I would like like her stuff. She would like my stuff, and I finally said we gotta get on a phone call and just and mm. just chop it up, you know. And so we get on a call. She's she's as enamored with what I'm doing as I am with what she's doing. I'm like, wow, that that in itself is humbling, and and and. Uh, makes me feel good about what I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. And she, and she's talking about so she so she she has connections, right? So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get on Fox 40 in the wow. next week or two and do a segment about what, about what I'm teaching. I'll probably highlight the symposium, right, as my That's main cool. thing, and then we'll use that to do our media kit, and we'll just be taking mm -hmm. off, right? Absolutely. Um, she knows. I mean, it's just connected, but. So we get off the call, and I and I remember, like in that call, I remember that I had to I had to get back to two people I talked to last week mm. that were probably in different areas, but probably as as potentially impactful in my career as she right. is. Right, the guy for the Niners mm. who I talked to, who knows somebody there who does their outreach programs with nonprofits and and community relations. And then another woman I spoke to who started her own podcast. She's a, she's a, she's in the female entrepreneur space, mm -hmm. who has contacts at at my alma mater, UC Davis, about doing public speaking there. And I'm like, man, I got to get back to those people. I haven't gotten back to either of them yet. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, why? Then yeah. why? So yeah. it's 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 those two steps: the want and the belief. Mm -hmm. Right. And you have to have this. This knowing that what you what you hear and feel as a calling in your soul and spirit and your ear is real, yeah. and we lose that when we leave environments that produce the feelings that remind us that we're connected to source, mm. right? And I and, and I use I did a video yesterday. It's gonna post today about the room you're in matters. Mm. And, it, and it talked about like at UC Davis when we cut down on cut day from like 45 defensive backs to a room of only the guys who made the team of like 30 of like 25 of us 
and the the environment was just different all of a sudden. Yeah. Because like, the guys who were there were like going to be playing on Saturdays, and it was just yeah, like no, no freshmen anymore, and you just felt the difference. And what happens is going back to our original one of our first points is when we leave that environment and we get back into the day-to-day lives that we have, the earthly lives that we live, we get so far removed from that, that natural vibrational connection with source that we forget. And without that, oh, sorry. And letting it go, it's going to be more of a balance. Well, here's, I, I, middle. Sorry, T. No um, and without that connection, right, to source, we get pulled away by the earthly things. Mm. And you can't believe who you are when the whole world's telling you who you aren't. Mm. Right? So my point of that story was now I walk away from that and I get back to my day-to-day grind and every minute that goes by, I'm reminded of the things I could be doing that make money now that aren't what I want to do. Right? Whether it's my neighbor's new car or whether it's 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 me not having enough people signed up for my symposium yet, or whether I get one no that 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 scares me up about you know for asking for the next you know proposal or whatever. All these things make you forget, mm-hmm. right? And forgetting who you are is the equivalent of a, of a reduction in your belief system, because mm-hmm. the belief system is all based on on knowing who you are. Absolutely. Like knowing who you are and what you can do and, and who and, and whose you are and where yeah. you come from, that is what belief is. Because mm-hmm. if you knew that, nothing would, would scare you. Absolutely not. So when you're not feeling that way, the disbelief shows itself in ways that make you not go after that thing. That so make I, you not I, have the audacity. I want to touch base on that message, and I didn't know all of this was going to link up this beautifully. So... There is a story that my pops was sharing with the family during his like Sunday prayer calls. And he shared the story of there's um, a point in the New Testament where Jesus is sleeping, like they say, in the belly of the boat, right? In the very, very bottom of the boat. The rest of the disciples are kind of handling the business atop of the boat. And there's a storm that comes story. in, right? Yep. My so, story, so, yeah. So, so watch this. Watch the twist that he put and then watch the remix that I'm about to put on that twist. So the message that he was saying was of first and foremost, the first thing those disciples did when they saw the storm was do what? Try to wake him up. So before that, they, they were afraid, right? Oh, Fear. Panic. Yeah, panic. Yeah. What are we yeah, going to yeah. do? Right. Yeah. So he, the, the context that I had never had before was that half of those dudes or a third of those dudes were fisher, fishermen. So to a mind of the fisherman, the carnal mind, the human mind, the program mind of a fisherman is a storm means death. Right. right? If we're right. in a boat, that means death. So right. essentially from that state, they say we need to go get Jesus because we've seen him work miracles before. And I'm going to bring it back to this thing of even proximity. Right. So they go in the belly of the beast. They get Jesus. They get him up. And the first thing he says is not stop wind is not, you know, OK, I'm going to do something. He says Y'all still don't believe. That's the first thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Y'all still don't believe. That's the very first thing he said. Y'all should have had this figured out, basically, is what he's saying, right? And so from that, he then quickly turns to the wind and says silence. And again, this is something that I had never thought about before. And my pop's message was about, ironically enough, hearing. That doubt is sowed through hearing. So the wind or the storm represented doubt, Right. So the storm in your life, whatever it may be, yes. is a representation of the, the consistent voices of doubt. Yes. And yes. so you said something about proximity. Right. right? I love that. You yeah. know what I mean? So he didn't say uh, be gone. He said when stop it. He said silence. Right. Because it was about the sound. And again, these are all metaphors and representations. And so Christ in himself was first saying to the guys, do you guys not get it yet? Because he's saying, y'all have y'all have been in my presence enough to know the power that works within me that I said works within you. Mm-hmm. Like I gave y'all the instruction manual already. Y'all seen me work, but y'all still don't tell the wind to silence itself. Mm-hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? Y'all yes. believe y'all is separate from the source. Y'all believe yes. that you do not have the authority that I do. And so right. uh, what we do in our lives is we go look for a quote unquote Jesus, right? Absolutely. I got to go yeah. find somebody to tell me. I got to go, man, I got to run to the thing or the person or the place to remind me. But in truth, it's in you. Yeah. You're the one who's commanded to tell that thing stop. Because again, that's so, that's so good. That's so you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because knowing at its core, again, is about relationship, right? When I say I know Coach Bobby, it's different than if I say I believe in Coach Bobby, right? Or I but like, or I have met Coach Bobby, right? right? When I say I know, it means that I have a clear depiction of who you are because right. I have relationship. Yep. We have had time. We have had, you know, uh, a sense of closeness. That's the only way I can know anything. And so in order for us to know, in order for us to get past that place of like wanting to have faith or desiring to have faith and knowing is through remembering that it's all about relationship. And again, it's not this relationship we see as like a person to person, but it's us with the spirit within ourselves. It's right. us with the voice of truth within ourselves. When right. we can recognize the voice of truth in ourselves, the voice that says you are enough, you are loved, you are worthy, you can do all things. When we recognize that voice and we have relationship with that voice, then we know that all things are possible. That's so true. And, and, and oh my God, that's so good. Because it. this episode of the DNA of Greatness podcast is brought to you by the BTY Symposium. The BTY Symposium is an immersive workshop aimed at getting the student-athletes the tools they need to achieve their ultimate dreams. Whether a one-day or multiple-day format, the symposiums provide an all-inclusive environment that nourishes athletes physically, mentally, and emotionally. Now back to the show. And, and what's, what's great about what you just said is, is it goes back to my five steps to greatness. Right? For those who have been following along, five steps to greatness. Step one is want. Mm -hmm. Step two is belief. Step three is the habit of going, right? Creating structure, you know, systematizing, you know, the, the steps to getting to where you want to be at. Step four is, is, is becoming intimately more aware of your dream, mm -hmm. learning. So step four is learn. And then step five is understanding um, that there will be challenge and having strategies to keep you motivated, inspired, rested, and ready for the for the challenges, but what's great about that is I've always I've always shown it and talked about it in terms of an, an evolving like like pedal on a bike, where it never it's not it's not linear, mm. like the steps go in that direction, but at the very top of it you're back to the beginning. So they all feed back into the very first two steps, which is which is which is so important. Yeah, and like you said. What you have to do is you have to be cognizant mm -hmm. and listen when you hear something or feel something that gives you information as to your connection to source mm -hmm. and a, as a message to the power you have inside of you. Absolutely. Right? So even though many of us, all of us, still don't understand exactly what it means to want something at the right level. We can't, we can't articulate it. We yeah. just understand and know when we want something. And then the belief system is still as, as ambiguous as want. But we have to understand that only, the only way to fortify that and make both of those two stronger is to do the other steps. But the important part is, as you're doing step three, go. As you're doing the push-ups, as you're doing the, the journaling, as you're doing writing your songs every day, whatever it is. And then the learning about your craft. Mm. learning about fitness, learning about music, learning about speaking, right? You have to understand that that is feeding yes. your want and desire and yes. faith. And you have to, I, 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 I've discussed this in videos, you have to then insulate yourself for long enough for that stuff to callous. Mm. Because when you work, when you, when you, when you are by yourself, if you're, if you're a rapper, and you're by yourself on the, on the way to school. You're in eighth grade. And you're some white kid in middle America. But you want to be a rapper. And no one around you believes it's possible. So you're on the bus and you're like, man, you're in your element. right? Again, 
There's no outside influence. It's just you and source. Mm -hmm. You and you and that and that voice telling you, I can do this. And mm -hmm. you're writing, right? This is the go. Every time I go to school, I'm writing in my journal. That that's your that's your step three. Right? Step four, when you go home, you might watch Eminem, you might watch people you look up to, whatever. Now you go to school and you allow people around you who saw your notebook to impact you and your belief yeah. system is crushed. Yeah. And so if you don't insulate yourself from that and protect your your vision and and your and your connection, if you don't quiet, like you just said, mm -hmm. if you don't quiet the noise long enough, you will never ever go further. Absolutely. You'll keep doing this over and over again, coming back to, to the start and getting crushed. Back to the start, getting crushed. And so you have to understand that it, it's a it's a circular motion in that you can't just do the steps. You can't just learn about it. That has to fortify and build upon and, and, and make stronger your desire and your belief system. And if you do that, it builds momentum. Mm -hmm. And you get, you get stronger and stronger in your belief to where it becomes to a point where you, I know I'm making it. I know I'm making it. Yeah. I know I'm losing weight. I know I'm building a business. I know I'm, I'm going to be a speaker. But we fall short because we allow that storm, right, to be just so so loud and we don't ever sit down and listen and understand what what power we have inside of us to quiet it and we have the power the power to do that so i want to take um a step in the exact direction or in the um in the pathway that you created for us which is this thing of the voices right there's two messages there there's one i heard of uh solitude and the power mm -hmm. and the importance of that, or even, you know, isolation from. However, I want to make it blatantly clear that every single one of us, if you're past six months old, you have two voices that are now competing for your attention, right? And I actually wrote this in, in the latest book that I've been putting together. And the chapter is titled The Two Voices. One voice is the voice of truth, which is the voice of God. And it is always saying the same thing. The other voice is the voice of the lie, because if you have a truth, you can only have a lie mm -hmm. in contradiction, right? You can't have a half truth, otherwise right. it's not the truth. Yeah, exactly. So you have the truth and you have the lie, and the lie is every other voice. So sometimes we feel like we have a thousand mm -hmm. voices in our head, right? You feel damn near schizophrenic at some points in time where you feel multiple personality disorder because all these voices that are contradicting. But in truth... Every single voice that is not speaking the message of truth, and I will highlight the truth in this video for y'all, every single voice that's not echoing those sentiments is a lie. Right. And so when you listen to those voices or when you allow those voices to dictate your, your maneuvering through life, you are allowing a lie to dictate your life. Now, and this right here, it might trigger you, so trigger warning, and if you are triggered, then the truth is doing its job. The voice of God always says abundance. How do I know? Because I can look outside the window right now and I can see an example or a display. It only knows how to overproduce, right? Even this mm -hmm. example that's been talked about a few times now uh, by a few different speakers, which is like a, a fruit tree produces more than it can hold continuously. It is wasteful in, oh, in, in its production. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so nature inherently is created to be absolutely abundant to overproduce so you tell me that not nah, abundance isn't real no that's a lie but you allowing abundance into your life in a certain way that's a choice right that's the difference now right, right. and the thing that makes a human a human is your ability to choose so abundance that's one somebody may say well okay sickness nobody can okay health is the natural state of life everything is going towards its own healing how do i know because if you get a cut, your body is going to take care of itself in the healing of that cut. If you have a cold, the thing you actually experience as a cold is your body's response looking to get rid of whatever the contagion is, right? Your body is always in response towards healing, always going towards and moving towards harmony. In fact, we use it in the wording that we, uh, we, we chose for ourselves. The word dis-ease states that it is a lack of ease in the body. Right. That means, this means it is a lack. So that means yeah. it is not its natural state, right? So then what's the natural state? 
ease. Ease, right. Right? Another word for healing, another word for harmony, et cetera. So somebody who may be going through an ailment is thinking to themselves, well, like this just happened to me. No, it means that there is something that is off. And it's not because you're a bad person or a good right. person. It's not a moral question. It's whether or not you are following certain laws and principles. Right. Universal laws and principles. If we go along with the natural accordance of universal principle, the ones laid out by our creator, then we will have those results. Right. The results that I do not currently have in my life is because I went in opposition of my own good in those mm -hmm. spaces. That's the only reason. There's no yeah. other reason. Nobody took anything. It wasn't the system. It wasn't the man. It wasn't him, her, or them. Right? So if you take life and start looking at every single aspect of life, and for the logical people, this is going to hit home directly. You can't escape it. If you're more emotional, this is still going to seep in. Right. Right? But if you're emotional, you're actually somebody who's then more sensitive towards those impulses of what feels right or wrong. And so yeah. let me yeah. push on that. Right? Our emotions are indicators. And what do they indicate? They indicate to what we're thinking. Why do they give yep. us a, a, a resonance of what we're thinking? Because our thoughts create our perception, which creates our world, right? Correct. So if you have a negative feeling, and this was a beautiful revelation for me, huh? you would not feel negatively about something if it was not off. Correct. You wouldn't, yeah. feel, you wouldn't feel anything. If, if negative thinking was... Like uh, conducive it was, to the was body. Okay, it was natural. Yeah, it wouldn't feel right. Yeah, it just wouldn't, like it wouldn't feel physical, pain. physical discomfort. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So if you are feeling negative emotions, it's because you are fixated or focused on something that is unnatural to Correct. your own like state. That. And so yeah, that that is that. So every time. Me. Exactly. Yeah. Every time. Yeah, and 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 to go one step further, right? If you, if you, if for those who are who are logical, and, mm -hmm. I, and I'm kind of both, right? You know, I'm 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 logical, I'm nerdy, I'm, you know, I'm a I'm a, a numbers guy, finance mm -hmm. guy, uh, but I'm, a, I'm I'm emotional and spiritual, so mm -hmm. I get both sides. But this make this should make sense. We are the only animal that has the ability to imagine. Correct. Right. That's what separates us from from other animals. Which is which allows us to create things, right? Everything we create is from imagination, right? Oh, right. right. We imaginate oh, right. stuff and we create it, right? Yeah. So, if that is our natural ability, then why would we see that we can imagine things and bring those things to fruition and feel good about it? Everything we see and do and touch, but yet discount the fact that when we think in terms and ways other than that hmm. our body physically feels different and not think that means anything wow. i think about it, i mean i mean why would an animal that has no reason to feel up to, to feel either way about anything why are we designed to feel stress and anxiety when we imagine things of this elk but not feel any physical discomfort or or angst when we imagine and believe possible things from this. And you now, now, you, now you might argue, well, when I think about money, which I do want, I still feel bad. Well, you you feel bad because you think about not having it. Correct. So <laughs> why would we naturally feel physical dis-ease, mm. physical discomfort, right? Mm. The opposite of comfort. What reason would the universe have to create that anomaly in our species that no other species experiences? Wow. Right? The dog doesn't, I mean, I don't have a dog. I used to have a dog. But the dog never, never like worried about him one day, about me or my parents. It was their dog, but our dog. But my dog never imagined what would happen if my, my dad lost his job. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wake up, oh my God, I mean, this food's good, but I don't know how long we're going to have it. You know what I mean? He never, so why would God Maybe I should eat one right now. Maybe I should save some for later. Yeah, Maybe exactly, I right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's great point, right? So, so why, why would God put that ability and that, and that direct physical reaction so good. that our brain has evolved into over thousands of years and our heart and soul and spirit over thousands of years, why would that be a natural uh, 
relationship between thoughts and body and and have one scenario one set of scenarios produce positive feelings and one other produce negative feelings if that wasn't intended for us to 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 see that understand it and then act upon it accordingly hmm. Hmm. the answer is simple it wasn't it was designed for for a reason period and anything contrary to that is not natural as you've already said so figure that out right and we don't want to do that we don't want to figure out why that is we want to we want to hide behind you know prayers and thoughts because it mm. it, it kind of saves us and it's Absolutely. easier for us to have a prescription yeah to how do I feel better whether it's my, mm. my my religion or physical rather than figure out okay well let's go back to this and figure mm. out what what of my want and my belief system again coach bobby what am i wanting Right, what am I wanting? Like what what am I resonating to the universe? And what am I believing? Right, that's causing these 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 ghost step items to not be working. Mm -hmm. Or or to cause me to want to need these ghost step things, tools more and more and more as opposed to less. Because once you have the first two steps, you don't need the other stuff. You don't need prescription. You don't need uh books to save you, you don't need people to save you because you save yourself. Uh, okay, I really, really want to get into this thing of, again, why is the go not working? By the way, when we say go, we mean the third step of the five steps to greatness, which is go, right? Do the thing. So, oh, I love this. So there is always an example in your environment of two people that are doing the exact same thing on the outside, but getting two very different results, Right. And you can use it physiologically in a way of two people go to the gym, but they eat completely different. Right. So you don't know how the body is breaking down whatever they're putting in, right? right? So one person says, I don't get it. I do the same amount of sets, same amount of reps. I do the same intensity levels. I'm doing the same negatives and the same uh, contraction. I'm doing everything, right? right. <laughs> bar for bar. And yet that person is getting the result that I want and I'm not. And I use this because, it's, again, it's easy to make this physical parallel, but this is what we do internally. One person is in the sales job selling the exact same product as the other person, but they're getting $50,000 worth of sales a year and the other's getting $50,000 a month, yeah. right? Not because I have a different territory. So same training. Same. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So we look to appearance. They Oh, because they look better. They have a better this, better that. Okay, let's take the person who is the most, quote unquote, hideous looking person you know, right? right? If I took the top... 10 wealthiest people in the world, at least six of them are not very attractive to, to oh, a majority yeah, of the population. Right, Physically, exactly. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yet we want to say, okay, in order to be you know, the most successful CEO, you got to be good looking. You got to be this. You got to be that. So those are already eradicated. So there has to be something else, right? So the one thing that we can't, again, quantify within ourselves, or we might not be willing to accept when we're not accepting the truth, and we will, and we'll even go down that road in that process. But when we're not accepting the truth, we have to blame something external. Correct. Right? Because we've Correct. been conditioned into believing that external fixes or changes external. Correct. So I'm not getting the result because I don't have this, or I was raised in that way, or this person Correct. did that to yep. me, or this person doesn't like me because of X, Y, and Z. When in truth, the only reality that can stand is that there is something happening differently with that person internally. Internally. There's a different conversation having internally, because y'all using the same sheet. Y'all using the yep. same sales, uh, the same yep. sales sheet, right? Yep. The same exact script. Same exact wording, same exact pace. But this person is getting 10x your results. Yep. There has to be something going on internally that you are not seeing. And that thing is what we again call belief or even self-belief. Right. 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 It is the antidote to the thing that we're doing. And so when we're not getting a result from the thing that we're doing, it's because of the conversation we're having about that thing. Oh, Every right. time. Every and, it's, I used and, it, and it's both. It's so... This episode of the DNA of Greatness podcast is brought to you by the BTY Symposium. The BTY Symposium is an immersive workshop aimed at getting the student athletes the tools they need to achieve their ultimate dreams. Whether a one day or multiple day format, the symposiums provide an all inclusive environment that nourishes athletes physically, mentally, and emotionally. Now back to the show. You know, it's funny because. Um... We are evolving, you and I, 
specifically, and then mm. our space of, of of thinking, yeah, and then as a world, right? We're evolving mm. into into accepting and understanding, you know, neuroscience and how the brain works and subconscious, yeah, um, and to bring it to my five steps to greatness. The want I I cannot overstate how important and imperative step one want and step two believe are. Absolutely. And I can't state enough how hard it is for anyone, even Coach Bobby who teaches it, to explain exactly what that is. All I can say is if you are struggling at something and it's not a time-based thing, right? Like get, like in high school sports, you got to be good for four years to go to college. If you, if you have a, a show coming up in six months for bodybuilding and you're, you're, you're like 30% body fat, we have limited time. But other than that, most things, if you've tried long enough at it, losing weight, speaking, Coach Bobby, you know, you know, becoming a yoga master, whatever it is, it is not due to you not having the right book, teacher, coach, diet, workout, whatever. Absolutely. And all I can say is there's something that's not wired correctly, not, co not wired correctly, there's something that is falling short or different than other people who are succeeding in the want and the believe. And those two areas, the it's good and bad, right? The good the good news is is there are infinite ways for you to work on that. Absolutely. And investigate that and research Absolutely. that. For example, I always tell people, like there are natural some people have a natural want to be fit. Mm. Right? And and so so for some reason I still like having my shirt off. And I still like walking around in tank tops. Right? Not everybody w wants to do that. It, it's okay, but because of that, you're not as driven to work out as I am. Correct. Right? And people say, well, I don't want it as bad as you. I don't really see or even, or even care to, to debate with you on, on, on levels of want. <laughs> Either you want, you want or you it don't. or not. Right? Yeah. And, and more importantly... You have a vision of what you want in your head, Absolutely. in your spirit. And, and, and you might lie to me. You probably do lie to me. Yeah. But you don't really lie to yourself. Yeah. Like, I wake up every day and still see ripped abs. Yeah. Like, I literally see myself walking around like, fuck, that guy's 20. No, he's 51. And, that's, and, and, and to many, many people, that's weird. But if, if you don't wake up, and like, and like, that's your want in your head. Then what is it? Exactly. Like, like be honest with, with yourself. What that is? Is it a little bit? A is it a it's little bit belly. leaner? Is it just bigger clothes that look good on you? Like, it's not be the honest. Belly. It's not huh? the belly. I know it's not the belly. Yeah, I know that's not the want. Right, that's it's not. It's not. But it might be that you want to just look better in your clothes. Right. So you might see, see yourself in maybe bigger clothes. Right. Right. But the, my point was, is the sales guy, your example, the one who's making it for whatever reason, he wakes up or drives to work imagining kicking your ass in sales. Uh, yeah. Right. Imagining like like saying, you know, to the boss, I'm, I'm going to get your job next next year. Yeah. Right. Whatever it is. So. And if we don't understand that, that's 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 the complex part of of our growth then we can't grow uh, you know uh, I, mean? gotta, I gotta interject something in here real quick yeah and it, it just this is direct download the more your belief grows the bigger your want becomes absolutely because it, exp it expands correct right as expands. soon as if i believe that i can do more then I am going to have a different one. Like when yeah. I believe that I could, you know, let's say uh, get lean, but I didn't think I could get muscular. Yeah. Then, okay, like my belief was, you know, to be lean. So I right. leaned out and I right. did the things necessary that were in accordance with leanness. But as exactly. soon as I found out there's a, there's a process to getting muscular, 
even if you're the skinniest person on the planet, right? My belief grew by seeing that, right? Other exactly. people who are this skinny, who are skinnier than I was, and now they're, and all of a sudden something clicked to me, and so my want changed. Right. So the person who says exactly. to themselves, I just want to look a little better in in the suit, doesn't believe they can have the six pack. That's right. the only reason. Exactly. But right. as soon as they buy into that aspect, exactly right. 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 And that's why it's so important to expand, you know, you know, I always talk about the, 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 the building, the building blocks, right? The, the books mm -hmm. that you put in front of your, your cabinet to get to the cookies, right? Mm -hmm. So important because part of, part of want and believe, well, they're all intertwined, right? Want, believe, go, learn, persist. It's not linear, mm -hmm. right? They kind of stack their way up. But once you get started on this journey, they're all kind of intertwined, right? Right. But what's cool about those two in particular, the want and the believe, right? They are really intertwined. Yeah. Right? Because if I never, ever even saw a big house. Yeah. Then believing it was possible wouldn't even be in my, in my, in my thought process. Right. If you never, ever saw anybody, say you grew up in some, some village somewhere. And you never saw anybody with big arms. That's why. Right. I, that's why I love seeing the Africans mm -hmm. train with like mm -hmm. just whatever they have. Yeah. Right. Because 30, 40 years ago, before they had access to, to to Western media, mm -hmm. and saw Arnold Schwarzenegger, they never would have even imagined having bulky bodies. Absolutely not. Yeah. But once they saw it, then it's a matter of well, how does that work? Yeah, and they're so like, and, and I say they like, like, like it's just some other species, right? But, but they're, they're so like understanding. They're so primitive, not primitive in a bad way, but primitive in oh, understanding yeah, we're, how we're the universe now. works, though. How yep. the universe works. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're not. They're not uh, cl uh, uh, clouded, or, 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 or their, their vision isn't clouded by all the other crap. They understand. Well, if I Correct. do this, and then this, and then yeah. this, I get here. Period. Right. So. Once they saw that and then saw like a, a video on how to do it, oh, boom, go get that rock, boom. Mm -hmm. So, but had they not seen that, right? So the want and the belief, like you said, they're just so intertwined. So, so it's important for you, for all of us, to step away from our current environment so yeah. that the, 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 the circle of what we, what we see as possible expands. Absolutely. Right? Of seeing it, right? That's the one. Now, once you... See, once you see something, as the law of attraction says, that that desire to have it is automatically answered. It, exactly. But so then done. the belief part of it is it's the allowance. It, it's letting you're, Now it you're in. allowing it to come to you. Yeah. Right? And that part, as you said, once you understand it, now you want more. Mm -hmm. Right? And because people, they leave that scenario. They leave the gym and literally go watch Grey's Anatomy. Or they go watch a football game, Coach Bobby. Yeah. Right, so you leave the environment that produced this feeling of euphoria mm -hmm. in your quest to be great. Right, I leave Bo Eason's workshop and I drive home and watch a football game. Mm -hmm. Right, if I don't get back to something that reminds me of what I saw, and and builds upon that belief system, again, where it's going to deteriorate over time, and I'm back to where I started. So the That's ones so who are great, the ones who the sales guy who who makes that thing work. He might have started with a better want yeah. or, a, or, or a more a stronger want than you for whatever reason. And maybe because his dad was a salesman at, at wherever, maybe his belief system was stronger to begin with, maybe. Or, but or what, maybe what, what that his created dad was, failed was, at was, sales. Huh? <laughs> it could be the opposite. His dad might have failed in sales. Right, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. exactly. You know I mean? but, but, so, but my point was, whatever it was, yeah. once you get started on that path, it's all interrelated, and the fact that he feeds that more, he feeds mm -hmm. the subconscious more. And again, we don't, we have ways of doing it that that, that we do, yeah. but it could be a lot of ways. But the fact that that most people don't work on that part of it and continue to buy books and continue mm -hmm. to go to seminars and continue to get a new diet without figuring out the other parts is why they're failing. Be it now, and then it will come to you. You can't wait till you get it to become that thing.